All right, so it's time for Stump the Chump. Stump the Chump. Okay, Are you ready? I've got Stump the Chumps. Yes, I have a couple here. I I'm have ready. excellent Stump the Chumps. All right, are you ready? Are you yes. going to go? No, okay. ladies first. It's always ladies first. Okay. So I love this part. Um, what is the most common sleep disorder? <laughs> the most common sleep disorder. Yes. Is snoring. No. It's not. No. What is the most common sleep disorder? Insomnia. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I knew that. I knew that. All right. So. Access denied. Okay, you are next. No, yes. All right. <laughs> Do men or women spend more time in the deep sleep stage? Women. We value our sleep a lot. Women tend to sleep longer and spend more time in the restorative deep sleep stage That's compared right. to men. Yep. The differences in sleep quality quality become more marked starting at age 30 and 40. Isn't that crazy? So men start to spend progressively less time in deep sleep and women spend more time in deep sleep. That's interesting. And see, so that makes sense as to why I need to come into work later and later. Mm, that's so cute. Nice try though. <laughs> All right, what's your next question? Okay, so each child in a household increases the mother's risk. I would say it could be mother or father or anybody that's caregiver, but the, the way they had this written was, okay. each child in a household increases the mother's risk of getting insufficient sleep by what percentage? Each child reduces it by, are there an A, B, and C? There should be an A, B, or C. A, 25%, B, 46%, or C, 10%? A, 25, B, 46, or C, 10. And each child reduces her sleep by 25%. <laughs> no. What? Access denied. <laughs> now she's getting 46%. Right. Each child? Yeah, I don't know how that, if you have three kids, that's way over 100%. I don't know. How yeah, that how does that, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I know I'm bad at percentages and fractions, but I don't know. It says by 46% each child. So every time you have a child, you're 46% more likely to have insufficient sleep. That's a crock of, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a bunch of, <laughs> all right, all right. Name three physical issues that plague a woman's sleep more than they do a man's sleep. Their partner. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> well, John. he snores a little bit. John snores a little bit? Actually, not a lot. Well, he won't now that he's got the CPAP machine. Well, he's actually, he's probably one of the quietest men I've ever slept next to. Well, all right. <laughs> okay. Name three physical issues that plague a woman's sleep more than they do a man's sleep. Three physical three. is three physical issues. Yes, three. We have physical issues. No, oh, you've got <laughs> you've got issues. What kind of that? <laughs> All right. What does this mean? Sleep problem. Hey, I haven't even answered that. <laughs> You're Just forever. give me a second to think the... about that. <laughs> Physical issues. Physical issues. They're trachea. <laughs> physical issues, not physical features. You can have physical issues with your trachea. Uh, physical issues. Their weight. That's a dangerous one. I think um, they're... Nose. <laughs> okay. So sleep problems related to cramps, bloating, and oh, headaches. Oh gosh, that's an estimated that's a one third of women. Issue? 
discomfort, <laughs> frequent nighttime bathroom trips, fetal movements, and certain sleep disorders like oh. restless legs and sleep apnea can interfere with a woman's sleep during pregnancy. Night sweats, fluctuating hormone levels, and other changes connected to menopause also cause sleep disorders. Yeah, I think I've experienced all of those things pretty much. May not menopause yet, but Have you ever looked up the word hypochondria? We should look that up. <laughs> I think I've experienced all of that. Yeah, when you have to fit a baby in there and they're like moving around and they're and then they stick their foot up inside of your ribs. Sounds like bad gas. No, that's... Oliver used to stick his foot up in there. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you got? That was crickets. Yes, yes it was. Um, what is the best way to solve a problem? Sleep on it! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Finally, you got one. She's been setting... She's been setting this up all day, so yeah. For two weeks, I've been trying to figure this thing out. Alright. Access granted. Does a person's circadian rhythm... Oh, wait, I wasn't finished. Sleep has it been proven to help create... Sleep has been proven to help creative problem solving. Yes, it does. Can I read mine now? Yep. Okay. <laughs> does a person's circadian rhythm vary if they're female or male? Mm. Yes. Okay. If you're female, it's way more important. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's what you came up with? Well, you were just saying we needed more sleep, so... Okay. Uh, it would only make sense. On average, women have a circadian rhythm that is about six minutes shorter than men's. Ooh. The circadian rhythm is responsible for keeping the sleep-wake cycle anchored with to environmental cues of day and night. Due to their shorter sleep cycle, women are naturally inclined to fall asleep and wake up earlier. Interesting. That doesn't happen to me. It doesn't? You're falling asleep in here every day. No. Yeah. Well, that's because I don't get enough sleep at home. No, you don't. If you thought that was great information, watch the entire episode here. Or subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch a fresh episode of Fishbowl every Saturday.